I'm quite efficient in After Effects since I've been doing all my VFX and motion graphics inside of this application. But lately I've been forcing myself to learn Fusion inside of DaVinci Resolve just because it would be so nice if I could skip that round trip to After Effects and just stay in one program and do all my compositing and maybe some motion graphics also inside of Fusion. So in this video I will be doing a tutorial how you can do a simple sky replacement inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So here is the footage that we're working with inside of Fusion today. This is a drone clip I shot a couple of days ago. And you can see that our sky here is, is washed out. It's overexposed because I wanted to get some coverage in the, all the shadows in, in this forest area here. So what we're going to do is to find a prettier sky online and then track it and composite it into this clip we have in front of us here. I went online and got this photo of a nice, nice sky that I want to try to incorporate into this footage. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to drag this photo into my composition here. The next thing we're going to do is to track the clouds that we see in front of us here so that we can attach the photo to that tracking data. As you can see, the drone is doing this little pan here and we want the photo to follow along in that pan in this clip. So how are we going to track the clouds here? If you press shift spacebar and type planar tracker and select that one, you can see that our node here got connected to our footage and then the planar tracker goes out to our viewer. If you press number two on your keyboard, you will pull up that, that material or node into your viewer here. Now we're ready to track the footage and we're going to start by making a mask over the clouds like this. And we have to set our reference frame to the first frame in the sequence. So I, I am at the first frame here and then I will go and press set. So now we can track from this point forward with planar tracker. And I tried this beforehand and I noticed that I get better results by using the tracker point, but you can also choose the hybrid point area, which is a, another algorithm that might work better in some cases. Under motion type, you can choose what you want to track and maybe your footage doesn't need to track the rotation and scale so maybe you only want to track the translation which is the position of the thing that you're tracking in this shot i'm going to choose the translation rotation scale because maybe we have a little bit of scale happening in the clouds as the drone is moving across this forest now we're all set up and we can start tracking this footage Okay, the tracking is done. Let's have a quick look. Our mask is stable on top of the clouds here, so it looks good. We can move on. Now we want to attach our photo to these tracking points. So how do we do that? If we go in here to planar tracker node and press create planar transform, we get another node and this node contains those tracking data that we got from our track. Now we need to connect these two to our drone footage. So I'm going to disconnect our, our planar tracker here and get myself a merge node and connect the drone footage to that one and then connect the planar tracker data into our merge node. So we can have a look at this. And now you can see that our two assets is combined here. But there's a problem, this footage is small. So I didn't get a 4K photo here, it's a full HD photo. You should, of course, use a high resolution photo here, but if, for this uh, tutorial, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to scale up my photo and just call it a day. And then I will pull it up so that we get it up here somewhere. Well, something like that. Next thing is to connect our merge node to media out and then we're going to press 2 on our keyboard so we can view it on our viewer. And then we can see what happens here. And it looks like crap. 
And why is that? So what we're gonna have to do is to make another merge node before and use that one to scale this, this photo up so that it can cover the area that we want. So what I'm going to do is take a background and then a merge node and then connect my background to my merge node. Now we will plug our photo into our merge node here and we will go, we're going to watch it by pressing 2 and now you can see that we have a black screen, we have a black background and our photo in the middle. And we're going into our merge node here and scale this up like so. Maybe we will place it even further up like this and then scale, the, scale it up even more and go up here. Because here is where we want to place our clouds. You see that our background here is black. We want this to be um, transparent. And that's an easy fix. You just go to background into color and just bring down alpha. And now you can see that our photo is pretty, pretty good. It's uh, tracking along fine. We're going to adjust it a little bit here and make it a little bit bigger and bring it up something like that. I'm going to do a mask on my merge node here by pressing this one because we get a, a nice mask, a rectangular mask that we can place like this. And let's just expand it a little bit. Now we're going to soften the edge here so that we can get a nice blend. We don't want to see the edge of the photo. So I'm actually going to bring my photo down a little bit so we're making sure that we don't see that that line basically the last thing we need to do now is to just play with the colors so that we can merge this photo into to the drone footage as much as possible so after the planar tracker here i'm going to select a color corrector and bring down the saturation so we can make this look like this is what we actually captured with the drone and you know, you can play with uh, contrast and gain a lift and all of that. But I think that just pulling down the saturation here will do just fine. And now we go back into our timeline and have a look at this. I mean, the tracking is fine. And uh, I think the colors are fine too. Let's just place a quick LUT onto this footage here. I'm going to my D-Log um, and just add a curve here just to spice things up. So here's the result. And that is how you can do a simple sky replacement inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. I hope this tutorial was helpful and if you got any questions for me, let me know in the comment section. I will see you in the next one. Bye!